okay to all of you so we are now on the topic statement of cash flows the balance sheet income statement and maintained earnings statements provide only limited information about the company's cash flows so when we say cash flows it talks more on the receipts and the payments of cash items for example Comparative balance sheets show the net increase in property, plant, and equipment during the year, but they do not show how additions were financed or paid for. So you just only see the totals of the particular items, but we did not know uh, paano sila nag come up in the particular amount, ano yung additions, ano yung uh, disbursements for the particular item. So, in the income statement also, it shows net income based on the accrual basis of accounting, but it does not indicate the amount of cash generated by the operating activities. So, another one, the statement of stockholders' equity in case of a corporation shows only cash dividends declared but not the cash dividends paid during the year. So, none of these statements presents a detailed summary of where the cash came from and how it was used. So, therefore, for us to know the inflows and outflows or specific details, so we need to have this statement of cash flows. So, this is the purpose of this statement of cash flows. Kasi, kung hindi natin alam paano na come up or na derive yung cash items natin doon on the balance sheet, then we could see further details through this statement of cash flows. We are now on the presentation of statement of cash flows. Now companies classify cash receipts and cash payments during the period into three different activities in the statement of cash flows. We have operating, investing, and financing activities. Now this is the first step in uh, identifying or making your statement of cash flows you need to identify or classify your cash inflows and outflows into different categories or activities so operating investing and financing now we'll begin with the operating activities in the operating activities this involve the cash effects type of transactions that enter into the determination of net income so again so operating cycle Lahat ng nasa operating cycle will be formed or take into consideration as operating activities. Cash flows from operating activities are primarily derived from the main revenue producing activities of the business. Take note of that. So as discussed in the previous topics, the revenue is reported on the income statement on the year when the goods are delivered or when services are rendered. On the other hand, Collections from the customers will be reported on the statement of cash flows on the year when cash is received. Also, expenses are reported in the income statement when it is incurred. However, cash disbursement for these expenses are reported in the statement of cash flows on the year payments are made. The following are examples of operating activities. We have cash received from the customers. From your sale of goods of re or rendering of your services, if hindi ka naman kayo merchandising, if servicing kayo. Next is we have cash received from fees, commissions, and other income. Aside from your main business, you have your other income and you receive uh, cash fees for that. Then that is included in your operating activities. Okay, so these are receipts. A and B talks about on the receipts while the remaining are cash payments or disbursements na. Therefore, outflows po sila. We have cash payments to suppliers, yung dinayad natin kay suppliers. Also, cash payments to employees, the salaries. Cash payments for other operating expenses or other miscellaneous expenses and interest payments. Therefore, so if mapapansin niyo lahat, operating activities talaga. Okay, they are connected to the revenue producing activities of the business so from the op if after natin na categorize from operating activities ikakategorize naman natin sila is it an inflow or an outflows when we say inflow receipts na receive ng business when we say outflows disbursement okay those are the expenses or cash outflowed okay or spent by the business okay 
occurred next is uh, investing activities. So in investing activities, this includes making and collecting loans and acquiring and disposing of invents investments, both debt and equity, and property plant and equipment. So cash flows from investing activities is the second section of the statement of cash flows. So after the operating activities. So cash flows from investing activities hints on the company's ability to generate future cash flows. So negative cash flows from investing activities imply that the company used cash to acquire long-term assets intended to generate cash and revenue in the future. So in the other hand, positive cash flow may indicate that the company is divesting or downsizing. So when we say invest, divesting or downsizing, they are disposing their assets. Okay, so examples include cash payments to acquire PPE. So that's cash outflow. Okay, bumilis na ng PPE, tangibles and other long-term assets. We have another one, cash receipts. So this is, is, this is a cash inflow. Okay, from the sale of PPE. So dito, they are... Uh, this indicates divesting or downsizing kasi binenta nila yung PPE nila which is not on the usual uh, usual activities of the business. They, sale, uh, they sold their PPE, intangibles, and other long-term assets. We have letter C, cash advances and loans made to other parties. So that's long-term re notes receivable. Okay. So, and cash collections on long-term notes receivable. Okay? So, if napapansin ninyo, lahat ng items are non-cash assets. So, tama po yung napansin natin. When we say investing activities, this involves non-current assets. Okay? So, ayan. So, always remember, kapag investing, any uh any cash inflow would imply that there is divesting or downsizing kasi nakatanggap tayo ng pera. Kapag nakatanggap tayo ng pera out from our land current assets, it means bumili tayo, uh, nag-dispose tayo ng assets, okay? Or nagbenta tayo, okay? Or some sort of that. But when we say uh, there is an inflow, okay, of your investing activities, okay, or uh, nasabi ko naman pala yan. Okay? So when we say uh, negative inflow or there is an outflow in investing activities, it means that we acquire, bumili tayo ng equipments for our business operations. Okay? So that's investing activity. For our last type of category is financing activities. So this involves liability in owner's equity items. So they include uh, obtaining resources from owners and providing them with a return on their investment and borrowing money from creditors and repaying the amounts borrowed. So there you have it. In financing, if um, investing activities involves non-current assets, here financing activities involve your Liability and owner's equity items. Okay, to proceed, cash flows information arising from financing activities is useful in predicting the claims of future cash flows by providers of capital to the enterprise. It also involves cash flow transaction with long-term creditors and stakeholders or shareholders. Okay, these examples include first is cash proceeds or this is an inflow. Okay. From issuing shares, okay, out from the capital if that is a corporation. Another is cash received from issuing notes or getting a long-term loan from a bank. So this is receipts, right? So this is a cash inflow. Therefore, ang transaction na ito, nangutang tayo sa banko. So therefore, naka-receive tayo ng cash. Pero yung credit aspect natin is meron tayong liability, okay, na long-term, which is payable. Next is cash dividends distributed to shareholders. So this is a cash inflow outflow wherein kapag nag ano kasi nag uh, invest or nag subscribe ng shares of stock ang isang tao magiging shareholder siya. Therefore kapag naging shareholder siya 
he or she is entitled for dividends as a return of their capital. Okay? So therefore, if magde-declare na ng dividends yung company that is a cash outflow and that belongs to financing activities. Another is cash withdrawals of owners. Okay, so financing activities din yan. And cash paid for principal of long-term debt. So this is an outflow. Same with the withdrawals, outflow din siya. And the dividends. Okay, this time magbabayad tayo ng long-term debt. Kung namutang tayo, naka-receive tayo ng long-term debt, meron din, uh, it also belongs uh, to financing activities, those that we, uh, those that paid under long-term payables. So, those are the examples of your financing activities. Now, we already know the three types of activities at ano yung mga components ng tatlong activities na yun. So, it's now time for us to uh, proceed to the uh, figures for us to know how to make a cash flow. This figure shows the general condensed format of the statement of cash flows. So, meron pa din tayong header. The in the second one is the, the name of the statement that we are making. So, that statement of cash flows and the period covered. Always remember that for the year and tendency cash flows. So, we, first is the cash flows from the operating activities, both inflows and outflows. Alagay natin dito. Next one is cash flows from investing activities, both inflows and outflows. Alagay natin saan. Then cash flows from financing activities, both from inflows and outflows. And then, if you're going to add or deduct that, it will... Uh, we will get the net increase or decrease in cash. So, after that, we are going to add the cash and cash equivalence balance beginning. Okay, and then for us to get our cash and cash equivalence ending balance. Okay? And this figure shows the cash inflows and outflows of your cash. Okay, so we have the cash pool. We have the operating activities on the left side. We have investing activities on the middle and financing activities on the right side. Now, on the top are the inflows of cash, meaning may pumasok na pera sa uh, natin company. At when we say, uh, dito, sa below, below, is or are the outflows of cash, meaning ito yung disbursements, pera yung mababa sa company natin. Okay, so in operating activities, ayun, when cash receipts exceed your cash expenditures or expenses, so that is inflow. In investing, okay, we say we sold property and we sold debt and equity securities, okay, and other entities, and the collection of loans to other entities. For example, nagpautang tayo sa other company, so na collect. If collect tayo, then that is part of the inflows of investing activities. Now, on the financing activities, there is an issuance of equity securities, meaning may, uh, may nag-issue na or may nag-subscribe in shares of stock, and issuance of debt, bonds, and notes, meaning nangutang tayo ng long-term uh, payables sa banko or any other lending companies. Now, below are the outflows. So, the outflows of operating activities are the expenditures for your expenses, salaries, and all. Basta it involves operating activities, specifically more on the income statement items. Now, in investing, so we provide an outflows of cash when we purchase property. And we purchase debt and equity securities. Okay and loans to other entities so ayan. and for the financing activities we pay for our dividends for the outflows of cash redemption of debt bayad tayo ng utang natin and requisition of capital stock so those are the illustration okay, of your operating activities investing activities and financing activities which are divided into two the inflows and the outflows of cash Okay, after uh, analyzing or categorizing and classifying the cash items into 
operating, investing, or financing, we are now going to make a financial statement, specifically statement of cash flows. Now we have two methods in making a statement of cash flow. First one is direct method and the other one is indirect method. Now the direct method looks like this. Okay, as presented in the figure. So International Accounting Standards or IS7 encourages enterprises to report cash flows from operating activities using direct method because it provides information that may be useful in estimating future cash inflows that are not available under the indirect method. Ito kasi yung pinaka world, uh, widely used or acceptable format. Kasi kapag indirect method kasi ang gagamitin natin, we start uh, computing or making the statement of cash flows from your net income. Okay? But here, medyo klaro kasi itong direct method since it really emphasizes the items that were included okay, or the details that were included as your inflows and outflows in every categories or activities. Furthermore, direct method shows each major class of cash receipts and disbursements and payments. The amounts supported as cash receipts and cash payments under the direct method are taken by converting the actual basis or the accrual basis revenues and expenses from the income statement to a cash basis by considering the changes in the related amounts or accounts in the statement of financial position. The following are the major classes of cash receipts and cash payments. So, ayun, example nito, cash flows from operating activities. We have cash receipt, which is a cash inflow, kaya positive 570,000 pesos siya. Cash paid to supplier, these are cash disbursement or cash outflow, kaya negative 319 siya pesos. So, there, this is a cash disbursement or outflow. Next is cash paid, since outflow pa din siya. Okay, that's 218 cash paid for interest that's another disbursement or outflow and cash paid for taxes so these items are uh, related to your operating activities so we are going to compute the net of it so 570 less all disbursement so you could get your net cash provided by operating activities and that is 20,000 pesos so madali lang naman siya yeah, add mo lang yung Ininet mo lang yung positive as to the negative for inflows as to the outflows. Now, another is cash flows from investing activities. So, nag-iisa lang naman siya. Cash received from sale of plant asset. Therefore, nag-divest tayo or nag-downsizing. Kasi nga, we received cash from our investing or non-current asset. Therefore, boom, nag-benta tayo. Okay, nag-dispose tayo ng asset which is 2,000 pesos. So, nag-iisang transaction lang siya. So, that is the net cash provided by the investing activities. Now, for the cash flows from the financing activities, we have cash received from issuing shares. So, that's positive. So, that's an inflow. Cash paid to retire notes. Okay, we pay our long-term liab, liability, and cash paid for dividends. So, those are disbursement. Ininet lang natin siya. 15 minus 18 minus 14. So therefore, we have a net cash used for financing activity to negative 17,000 kasi mas malaki yung uh, disbursement or outflow niya as compared to the inflows. So it is possible, okay? So after getting the total, so we have to net the three totals or net cash per activity, the 20,000 from your operating the 2,000 from your investing and negative 17 from your financing. So the net cash increase in the cash items is 5,000. Now from the 5,000 you are going to add the cash balance beginning. So that's 12,000 it is given here. Therefore your cash balance ending is 17,000 pesos. So that's the format of your direct method. So for the next method is indirect method. So, net income is computed using accrual accounting, right? Therefore, revenues and expenses rarely match the receipt and payment of cash. The indirect method adjusts the net income to get the net cash provided for use by operating activities. This method provides a useful link between the statement of cash flows and the profit or loss in the income statement 
and the account balances listed in the statement of financial position. So most accountants prefer this method for the ease and convenience in its preparation. Same with the direct method, the net cash provided or used by operating activities is determined by converting net income from an accrual basis to cash basis. Yes, you heard it right. <clears throat> In making income, uh, in making financial statement, specifically statement of cash flow, we are converting your accrual basis to cash basis since we are going to measure the actual inflows and the actual outflows of cash. Okay, so therefore, in indirect method, we are converting the accrual to cash basis. This step involves not only analyzing the current year's income statement, but also the comparative balance sheets and selected additional data that are needed to determine how cash was provided or used during the period. So in indirect method, since we are going to convert it, so may mga items na kailangan natin i-adjust to the net income. So from the net income, we are going to adjust these common adjustments and um, what are the reasons or explanation for the adjustments? So we have the item, the explanation, and adjustments below. So first adjustment is depreciation. Depreciation, depletion, or amortization of intangibles. Now, in income statement, we consider depreciation and the like as expenses. Now the question is, when we consider this as, a, as an expense, does it really involve actual outflow of cash? <clears throat> so the answer here is no. Since depreciation is an expense, but definitely wala naman po talagang dumabas na pera, therefore it is a non-cash item. So the effect is, or our adjustment is we need to add it to the net income. Next is the gain on lo or loss on sale of assets. So the gain increases and the loss increases the net income, but the cash effect is shown in the investing activity section. Therefore, nagkakagain or loss lang tayo. It's because of the non-current assets transactions. For example, nag-dispose tayo ng assets. So from the disposal, it's either magkakagain tayo or magkakaloss. Therefore, ididedact natin siya sa, sa net income natin because we are just measuring the operating activities. Okay, and here, <clears throat> so since it is involved in the um, investing activities, ididedact natin siya kapag gain, iya-add natin siya to the net income if it is loss. Next is increase in accounts receivable. So in Accrual basis of accounting, when we say increase in accounts receivable, definitely we record sales and we record accounts receivable because we have sales for revenue but we definitely uh, don't have any collections at all. So therefore, hindi po siya cash transaction. Therefore, kapag mag-increase yung AR ninyo, it means na meron, siyang, meron kayong sales pero hindi pa nakolekta. Therefore, i-add natin siya sa net income. Uh, I-deduct pala sa net income. It's because wala naman talagang actual na increase in the net income. So, wala naman talaga actual collections niyan. Pero once mag-decrease ang AR, meaning, we already provided the collections. Therefore, Kapag nag-decrease ang air, may bayad na si customer. So, we need to add it to the net income if ever there is a decrease in receivable. Next is the de increase in inventory. When there is an increase in inventory, we need to deduct it from the net income. Why? Because the portion of the purchases for the period does not form part of the cost of goods sold. So, hence, profit is increased. So, here, kapag mag-increase yung inventory, Ididedact natin siya from the net income. Continue, we have decrease in inventory. If there is a decrease in inventory, we are going to add it in the net income. It's because cost of goods sold includes goods purchased and paid in prior years. So that's the reason 
why do we need to add the net uh, add it to the net income when there's decrease in inventory how about if there's an increase in prepaid expenses so nag increase yung preparals natin so we need to deduct it from the net income because there is payments during this period's exceed related expenses shown in the income statement so i deduct natin siya how about decrease in prepaid expenses we need to add it to the net income it's because expenses recognized during this period exceed related payments for goods and services now for the increase in trade payables in accrued expenses so there is an increase of payables so we are going to add it to the net income it's because expenses exceed related payments to suppliers and others while if there is an in decrease in trade payables so we need to deduct it from the net income because there is cash payments to suppliers and others exceed related expenses so those are the items the common adjustments and our consideration to the net income and the reason why we add or deduct the following adjustments so here's an example of the statement of cash flows using an indirect method which is shown below so we have the name of the company the type of uh, the type of statement that we are making which is the statement of cash flows and for the period covered now for the cash flows from operating activities as i said a while ago we need to uh, begin with the net income and we need to add or deduct the following adjustments so depreciation is added the loss is also added okay the gain on retirement on nose is deducted increase in receivable is also deducted as well as the increase in inventory increase in prepaid expenses decrease in accounts payable is deducted but if increase yung accounts payable natin iaan natin siya decrease in interest payable is deducted and increase in income tax payable yes ito yung sinasabi ko iaan natin siya now from your net income you need to add and deduct the following adjustments for us to get the net cash provided by the operating activities in this example we still have the same answer with the direct method 2000 20000 pesos net cash provided by the operating activities now on the cash flows from investing activities we only have one uh, portion of the transaction that's 2000 coming from the cash receipts from sale of plant assets so that's 2000 okay next is cash flows from financing activities okay the cash received from issuing shares and then the cash paid to retire notes and dividends same as to the direct method transaction so add or deduct the following adjustments and we are getting negative 17 as a net cash used in financing activities now let's add or deduct the following and then we get the net cash increase which is 5000 and the cash balance beginning so we could have our cash balance ending 17000 so there you have it so the, the the big difference only of the two method direct and indirect method is that indirect method when we are going to classify the the cash inflows and outflows from the operating activities kay net income po tayo magbe base if indirect method and then we'll do the usual one pagdating naman sa direct method okay so but among the two method a most favorable po is yung direct method since it really uh, shows the inflows and outflows of the operating activities okay so but the question if mas mas iba ba ang results if indirect method or direct method ang gagamitin the answer is no they have the same um, totals ang nag -iba lang is yung way of the approach pagdating sa operating activities but the result or the ending cash balance will still be the same okay on both approaches so there you have it the statement of cash flows and the two types of format when we are going to make statement of cash flows and the difference between the two 
are discussed in this topic. So I hope that you learned a lot with this topic and be prepared for your next activity.